Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Chloe Breyer. I'm the Executive Director at the Interfaith Center of New York and Associate Minister at St. Philip's in Harlem. I would just like to uh, welcome you to the 31st uh, annual uh, Rabbi Marshall, semi-annual Mar Rabbi Marshall Meyer Retreat for Social Justice, entitled Coming Home, Faith Communities Supporting Successful Reentry. And with us this morning to give the opening reflection is uh, Imam al Haj Talib Abdul Rashid from the Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood, no stranger to the importance of this issue and a, uh, a leader of uh, great importance in our New York community and around the country. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Peace be on the law. Salam alaikum. Shalom alaikum. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate God. Um, I'm going to offer this brief reflection and then run to yet uh, another funeral for another one of our young people killed in the community as a result of the proliferation of guns and violence in our city and in our nation. But what brings us here this morning are really two themes that are common to the prophetic tradition. They are justice and freeing the capital. These two values are common to sacred tradition and for a spiritual uh, charge for us this morning, I'm going to read two uh, selections from scripture. But first I want to remind us of that which we all know so well. Remind us of that which I constantly tell incarcerated men with whom I have been working since the 1970s. I always say to them that you do the crime, you got to do the time. And just punishment for the violation of the sacredness of human life is justice. But when punishment for crimes becomes systemic, based more upon racial and class oppression than a genuine pursuit of justice, then prophetic values must be brought to bear. Unequal application of the law based upon unjust policies demand the raising of the prophetic voice. When we look about us in America and when we see that America has something like two to five percent of the world's population and 25 percent of the world's prison population, this should raise moral outrage in us. When we look at that prison population here in America, we see that the majority, the overwhelming disproportionate majority of those prisoners are black and brown men. And we must know the history of the country in which we live because then we'll know that there are no coincidences. When we look at the modern day prison industrial complex, we actually have to go back to the end of the Civil War and know that the laws and policies that were put in place at the end of the Civil War, they're called the Black Codes. I don't even know if they're teaching about that at school anymore. But the Black Codes were discriminatory policies 
designed to re-enslave the same people and especially the same men who were freed as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation. So our country has moved from black codes to slavery by another name and from slavery by another name to the prison industrial complex and from that complex to the school to prison pipeline. And so at the beginning of this event this morning, so happily named, I knew Rabbi Marshall Meyer. He and I used to joke that he was the only uh, rabbi in New York City that was big enough to hug me and engulf me <laughs> with, his, uh, with his hug. He's a, he's a big guy, big, gentle, compassionate guy. So as we embark on today's activity, let us raise the prophetic voice. There are people in government who are trying to raise a voice of reason and compassion. We're nearing the end of the term of a president who has made sure to visit prison. First time this happened in the history of the presidency. President who has made sure to try his best to implement some measure of just policy as we see with the release of 6,000 nonviolent felons just a couple of days ago. We raise the prophetic voice in a city that houses the world's largest jail called Rikers Island. And in that world's largest jail, that jail is uh, in youth facilities in that jail are under federal monitoring right now as we, as we speak because of the abuse of young incarcerated people. We raise the prophetic voice only a day or two after ban the box. So our reading from scripture, our, our reading from two traditions, uh, the Islamic sacred tradition contains what we call a hadith or a sacred narration in which Abu Musa al-Ashari reported that the Prophet Muhammad, in peace and blessings of Allah, commanded, free the hungry or feed the hungry. Feed the hungry. Visit the sick and set the captives free. And then also we have from Christian tradition, if I have a one, and this is really Judeo-Christian tradition, that famous reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah that Jesus did in the synagogue, wherein he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. May these words from scripture inform our gathering today and may the almighty God inspire our hearts and may that inspiration translate into wisdom and work because that's how you get things done. As it was often said to me uh, as a youngster, there are knowers, believers, and doers, <clears throat> but it's the doers to get the job done. Thank Almighty God. Peace be unto you all. Salam. Adi. Alaikum salam.